Three holy children. This life that I live is not for the weak. It's, not for it's the only weak. for the strong. If you come to serve, then what do you seek? What do Either you win or go home. So gird up your loins, watch over the souls. Gotta live in pain to build up a nation. Through much tribulation, you lose and you gain. This life that I live is not for the weak. It's only for the strong. If you come to serve, then what do you seek? Either win or go home. So gird up your loins, watch over the souls. This life that I live, just me and my kid, go zero to ten, these laws that I man, life without sin, yeah, Christ is the man, it's me and my man, we doing it big, you looking to sin, I'm grabbing my friends, you no longer my friend, and for that paper you get, I'm in poverty but I'm rich, I'm trying to get paid, many y'all call, that don't mean your name is up on the list, got it in door, on one accord, no time for no war, Christ is my Lord, I'm her lord, I know that she's sure This life that I live, it's not for the weak It's, not for the it's weak. only for the strong If you come to serve, then what do you seek? What Either you win or go home So gird up your loins, watch over the souls Gotta live in pain To build up a nation, through much tribulation You lose and you gain This life that I live, it's not for the weak no. It's only for the strong if you come to serve, In the cold, the righteous and bold. I used to be lost. I'm back in the fold. Esau is exposed. The time that we in, it's time to go home. My lineage is in Christ. Can't wait to see my king go high on the throne. Remember the past, shit made me mad. But in our reflection, remember the mission. The most I was missing, cause we kept on sinning. Gotta get in order of our religion. They don't even understand that we Christian. They don't even understand they ain't Christian. The same mentality passed on the children. Malachi 1 and 4, they the it's villain. That I live, it's not for the weak. It's, not for it's the only weak. for the strong. If you come to serve, then what do you seek? What Either you win or go home. So gird up your loins, watch over the souls. Gotta live in pain. To build up a nation, do much tribulation. You lose and you gain. This life that I live, it's not for the weak. No, no, no. It's only for the strong. If you come to serve, then what do you seek? Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Israel, shalom, most high in Christ, bless, most high in Christ, bless. It's another day that the Lord has awarded us to go forth and do his work in his vineyard. This is Patient Saints Radio, 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 on the new radio station. All right, we are Israel United in Christ. And in the house, in the house, of course you know, we have shalom, 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 Israel. I'm Deacon Malachi. I'm Officer Amaziah. I'm Officer Shemaya. Officer Uziel. And over there we got Brother Soraya. Soraya with us. All praise, all praise, all praise. praise. It's always a pleasure, a pleasure to be with your brothers, sisters in the radio. Like always, I'm pissed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Angry black man. I know, the angry black man. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> what, what they say, uh, uh, what they call me again? Uh, remember the, the guy that used to play in uh, Police Academy? Oh, Tackle Tackleberry. The Taco Bell. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm pissed. Yeah, I'm pissed. Every time I look at the news about what's going on with our people, That's right. the, I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm, I'm really pissed. We got a lot of stuff going on to do. We got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we got stuff going on in uh, Michigan, Flint, Michigan about right, the water. Right, right. We right. got. Uh, Will Smith, one, Will Smith wife wanting her mouth. We got the other coon. We, we also got Will Smith's kids what, running wild. Running wild. <laughs> we, got, we got a lot of stuff. We got we're Stacey, still, we're, Stacey, Dash. Stacey Dash running her mouth. Yeah. We got, uh, yes, the police still, still killing Negroes. That's right. Uh, that's, that's, that, that's the American pastime. Yep. Yeah. Hey, it's not baseball. It's, it's, killing, it's Negroes. killing Negroes. Killing Negroes is the Negroes American Negroes pastime. pastime. But yeah. Negroes worried about um, getting uh, accepted by the white man. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 dying every day. But uh, why didn't get it? Why didn't get an Oscar? Right, right, right. No, why didn't Oscar. get an invite to the Oscar? Invite to the Oscar. So we got other stuff. But before we go into anything, I wanna I wanna touch on it. Give me John, eight thirty two. Read that. 
This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, Christ said, we're going to know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. That's right. We're going to know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Okay. You know, I got, I got, I got, uh, I got a lot of phone calls. Uh, I got a lot of phone calls. I got phone call from craziest black woman. Uh, I got a phone call from a woman who said, uh, "Brothers, I like the, I like uh, the way you guys built up the Bible. I like the truth and everything. However, I'm not gonna accept it because I don't like the way you guys bring the information out." Mm. Mm, I'm like. Mm. What you mean by that? Your guys too angry. I think if your guys be a little more nicer, people are gonna be more accepted. Well, I wanna first first I wanna say one thing. We didn't bring we we're not here to convince nobody. We the prophet was not sent to convince the big black the big mouth black woman about anything. That's right. As a matter of fact, you think we as a matter of, give me Isaiah 58 and 1. Because she said, I think if your guys was bringing up more like Joe Osteen, Quefo oh, Dollar, TDJ, I think more people may be accepted to us. And guess what? She's, she's right. The, the people would be more accepted. But we'd be also be lying to the people. That's exactly. Right. exactly. We'd, we'd be rich right now. Yeah. We'd all have our own fancy cars, our vacations, yeah. all of that. See, she, 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 let, let, let's, read the, let's read the scripture. Let's read the scripture. This is the book of Isaiah chapter I'm trying not to say the wrong thing. I'm trying very hard. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. You know, the scripture at the beginning say cry aloud. The problem with our people today, they never see, I always say, they never see black men talk the way we talk. That's right. The Bible say cry aloud. Cry aloud mean what? You gotta talk loud. Bring it loud. Sorry. You got people dying every day, and day. The black woman talking about. Can you guys talk a little softer? No, we don't. We're not gonna talk softer. That's right. No, we're not. No, we're not. We angry as hell. What's going on with our people? What's going on in our community? What's going on in the black family? We mad as hell. We. And show my people their transgression. The Bible also says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. The scripture says, Christ talked to 5,000 at one time, right? Was that with a microphone? No. How the hell do you think he talked? He talked loud. That's right. So when we talk, you say, oh, can you please turn it down a little bit? <clears throat> hell no, we're not going to turn nothing down. Hell no. You know what she want to do? She want to emasculate us. That's right. Feminize. No, we ain't of we no 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 no. We are the men of the Lord. That's right. Damn right. We are the men of the Lord. We're gonna talk like men. The problem is you want us to talk like little boys. Because you used all you like you used to deal, you dealing with little boys. You used to be like little boys. Now that you see men, you don't know how to you don't know how to accept men. That's right. We are real men. That's right. And we're gonna talk like real men. We're not gonna talk like Justin, like little sissy boys. There's no sissy boys in here. We are no Christian either. We are not going to talk like a Christian. We're going to talk like men, like the prophets speak. Because what? We are the damn prophets. That's, That's, right. Right. That's right. Believe it or not, we're going to talk like them. Because the last time we have a class, we, the last time I was here, we did uh, Christianity is worse than crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, I like that. When you look at the comment, the, I'm reading the comment. Somebody say, yeah, I, li I like it. But the way they talk, I, I don't know if I can accept that. Mm -hmm. Hell with you. Then drop dead. If you don't accept the way we talk, drop dead. How about that? Yeah, you're not going, you're going to hit me now. We don't give a damn. We're going to speak. We're going to teach the word of God. Whether you want to accept it or not, that's on you. You want to accept it or praise. You don't want to accept it, die with a slave master. We could care less. Drop dead. Hey, somebody, but we're not going to do what you say. Somebody got to be the two-thirds. Yep. That's the prophecy. Somebody got to be it. Hey, better you than me. That's it. You finish that verse, finish it up. And shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sin. The Bible said, show my people their sin. Show, how are we going to show you sin? By opening the Bible. But we're not going to talk like you want to talk. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 and 10. 
Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. You see that? God has set us over the nation of Israel. God has set the men you see here, the prophets. Yes, yes. Yes, I know you probably say, oh yeah, they're very prideful. You damn right we are. We are the prophet of Mosai God. It's an honor to be a prophet. It's an honor to be a prophet. We're not going to apologize for that. Hell with your opinion. Hell with your feeling. We don't give a damn how you feel. We're going to tell you, thus says the Lord, whether you accept it or not. That's what we're going to teach. Read that again. See, I have this day set thee over the nations. To do what? And over the kingdom mm -hmm. to root out. To do what? To root out. Read. And to pull down. To pull down what? To pull down all the filthiness the so-called white men been putting in your in you filthy brain for so many years. That's what we're here to do. All the crazy imagination, homosexuality, lesbianism, Christianity, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving. All these false doctrines, our job is to pull them down. With what? With the word of God. We right. And to pull down and to destroy. To destroy. To destroy. Our job is to destroy the lies. All the lies the so-called women have been putting in our mind for so many years. Our job is to destroy white supremacies. That's right. Yes. It's to destroy Christianity. Because Christianity is white supremacy. Go That's on. our job. Read. And to throw down. And to throw down, read. To build. To build. After we, after we destroy, we throw down. Guess what? Our job is to build. That's right. How do we build? By you repenting and start keeping the law and the faith of Christ as an Israelite. That's, right. That's how we build. So, whether you accept it or not, you want to get offended? Hey, hell with you. Get offended. We could get, we, man, you could, we could care less. We don't care less. Listen, we are the most hated group of people in the planet Earth. Christianity is not the most hated group. The Israelites are. You want to know why? Because we are a threat. We are the biggest threat. You want to know why we're the biggest threat? Because we're telling the people, hey, wake up, black man. We we mining our people of white of white supremacy. We're reminding our people of what America done to them. Because our people forgot. That's right. Our job is to remind you Negroes what white society have done to you. Destroy you. Now, uh, you finish that? To build and to plant. To build and to plant. Bro, same book, 28 and 8. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms. Read that again. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of like old. Like I said, we are the prophets. We are the Jeremiah's. We are the Ezekiel. We are the Malachi. That's who, that's who we are. We are the prophets. We don't. Prophesy both against many countries. What the prophet do? Prophesy both against many countries uh -huh. and against great kingdoms. Against great kingdom. America is a great kingdom. That's right. We are prophesying against America. All the filthiness, all the sin, all the murdering, all the lying America has been doing to our people for so many years. Our job is to prophesy against that. But the black women don't like that. I don't like the way you guys bring it out. I don't like that. Yes, that's our job. We don't care what you like. That's right. That's our job. The point is it's brought out. Yeah? That's the point. That's our job. Read. Of war. Of war. And of evil. Of evil. America is an evil place. Some of you love Babylon. Hey, Dick, how you going to bring that out smooth? It says... A war of evil and pestilence. Wait, how you gonna bring that out? Like Joel Osteen can't bring that out. Nah, that's right. You can't bring that out in a Joel Osteen voice. If you about to get hit by a bus, and I know you're gonna get hit by the bus, am I supposed to speak smooth to you? Yeah. Hey, hey brother, can you get out of the way? Yeah, you're gonna die. You're gonna hey, die. You should sing it. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> if I sing it to you, you gonna you gonna feel better? No, we gotta prophesy against that thing, man. Against right. it. 
You got all this evil going on in America, the black women talk, the black women worry about how we speak. You got all this evil, all this oppression America is doing to our people. The black women, oh you speak too, you speak too rough. Just say it's so. The black men too! The, the, that's the feminine black men. Oh, your brother speak too rough. I cannot accept this. Well, to them back, drop dead. You, you know what? It's not, it's not so much how we bring it out, it's who's bringing it out. It's the men that they've seen in a low estate for hundreds of years are now being risen through the spirit of the Most High to stand up on their feet as a bold army yes, to sir. tell you your transgressions. And our people are, are, are at all at that. They're like, wait a minute. You, you, you were supposed to be the niggas in the hood selling drugs to each other. Yep. Who, just like, um, remember, remember in Django when uh, Samuel who Jackson, that who that nigga on that nag? Oh, Steven, my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my ass. Who this nigga up on that nag? Oh, Steven, you have nails for breakfast. What's the matter? Why you so honored? You miss me, huh? Oh, oh yes, sir. I, I miss you like a like a hog miss fly, like a <laughs> like a, a baby miss mammy titty. <laughs> I miss you like I misses a rock in my shoe. <laughs> now, I ask you. Who this nigga on that nag? It's Snowball. You wanna know my name or the name of my horse? You ask me. That's who the hell you calling Snowball, horse boy? I'll snatch your black ass off that nag down here in the mud so fast, make your head. Steven, 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 Steven. Let's keep it funny. Django here is a freeman. This nigga here? That nigga there. Let me at least introduce the two of you. Django? This is another cheeky black bugger like yourself, Steven. Steven, this here's Django. You two ought to hate each other. Okay, that's how our people view the prophets of the Lord. You're in astonishment that men can be in the spirit of the Lord and stand up on their feet to be that great exceeding army that will put the nations in fear. You're supposed to be rejoicing in that. That finally, that the men that's in your community is standing up and telling the drug dealers, Stop selling drugs to our people. Stop being whoremongers. Stop committing adultery. You're supposed to rejoice at that. But our people are stiff-necked and rebellious, man. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear Joel Osteen lie to them over and over again. Go ahead, D. Uh, you finish that verse, bro? Yes, sir. Of, of war and of evil and of pestilence. Of war, of evil, and of pestilence. We got a lot of that going in America. Now, 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 now. Let's talk about what's going on in Flint, Michigan. Hmm. The water system. I was on my way here to the radio station. I was listening to the news and uh, I heard uh, that Coon R. Shopton, yes, I said it, Coon. Hmm. Uh, Coon Nigger R. Shopton was talking about. That's right. Uh, yeah, you know, you guys, uh, one of the problem is you guys don't vote for the right people. We're going to try to make the governor, uh, the governor is going to, oh, oh, he said, if you want to come join us, we're going to march. Oh, uh, uh, Get on the bus. We're going to go to Washington, try to convince the governor to resign. Uh, listen, you, that, that, that is why I'm mad. Yeah. That's why I'm angry. Yeah. Stuff like that get me pissed off. I heard, and you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a 43 years old man. I've been hearing the same garbage every day for 43 years. Nothing never changed. But you got the black man, you got the coon, so-called black leader in the black community, who's still, who's still telling the black man, keep hope alive. Keep, uh, I'm just pissed. Uh, go, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I got an article here. Uh, about that Flint, Michigan thing. I'm gonna read a paragraph of it real quick about uh, Flint, Michigan and the water situation and how long it's been going on. Because right, this is not new to Flint, Michigan. I'm gonna read it. The images are shocking. Brown tap water resembling diarrhea. Young children's faces covered in lesions. For over 18 months, the people of Flint, Michigan complained that their water was contaminated but their voices fell on deaf ears. Now it's been declared a federal emergency with experts estimating that roughly 8,000 to 9,000 children under the age of six may have suffered permanent brain damage 
after being exposed to high levels of lead in the city's water supply, not to mention countless adults. Re redacted emails released under the Michigan Freedom of Information Act have since revealed that Governor Rick Snyder's administration was aware of Flint's water problems almost a year ago, but neglected to act or even inform the public until it was too late. Mm. Yeah, Anything you gotta say about that? I'm, I'm, so I, go on, I'm so pissed. I'm not even gonna talk about it. I ain't telling you. I'm telling you the truth. So let's that's that's core captivity. Yeah. That's 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 really what it is. It's captivity. White man owns your you. Know, you know. You know. what? You know what? Go, read, read it, Zechariah eleven and five. He saw. He's, 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 he saw. He saw. Is the devil the Bible speak of? Right. The so-called white man is the devil. Those are the same men. A Shapton, Jesse Jackson, so-called black leaders telling you to vote for. Those are the same men. They're telling you, hey, you got to go out there and vote. You got to go out there and vote. Uh, you want change, you got to vote. Oh, how you want to complain, uh, uh, but you don't vote? You vote, and, and then what turns out? You on? vote is not important. You vote don't count. You don't get it yet. And, and you might say to yourself, what the hell are these Negroes talking about? Oh, my vote don't count. Okay. Uh, let, let's, let, you, know, you know what? Read the scripture, then I'm going to bring you a little history. Just to show you, your vote don't count. As a matter of fact, not only your vote don't count, you, the black man don't count, period. When the white man is talking, he don't count you. What do I mean by that? When the white man go to Manhattan and spend $5 million dollars open a restaurant, he's not thinking about Negroes going to come here and eat. You, you know what I mean? You don't count. In other words, you don't exist. You do not exist. That's what you don't get in your mind. You do not, according to white society, white supremacy, you don't exist. Get it through your head. We do not exist. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna prove it to you too. Read the verse. Zechariah 11 and five. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Who's, who's, who's our possessors? Esau is our possessors. The so-called men is our possessors. The so-called men went in Africa, brought a bunch of Negroes, the Hebrew Israelites, bring them in this part of the earth, take, them, take all over the world. That's, those are our oppressors. They are our possessors. Read. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord. Read it again from the beginning. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. You hear that? Esau is killing us. The white man is killing us. Lead poison. He said, I'm not guilty. The, didn't you just read the governor know about it? For a year. For a and year? 18, and 18 months. 18 months and he don't do it. What did he say? He didn't do a damn thing. Hey, hey, I'm not guilty. Hey. Yeah, I know about it. Okay, so what? Okay. And he didn't resign either. And he didn't resign. Now you got that Kuna chapter. Oh, we're going to march? We're going to try to force him to resign? Oh, my God. You made me sick to my stomach. And guess what? I, I bet you that governor is a Christian too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet you he's a Christian. Presbyterian or something. Hey, hey, Deacon, real quick. Um, the reason why it's a problem now, it's not because of the children or it's causing skin problems to the people. It's, that's not the problem. The reason why it's it's a problem now is because they use the water to uh, create GM parts. And the water is rusting the parts. Oh. That's why it's oh. Oh. Wow. The white man is the damn dumb. Right. You hear that? Uh. <clears throat> man. You, hey, you know, you know what's so interesting about what you said? <clears throat> wow. Let me, let me tell you something. What you said is uh, what the statement you just make is very powerful. The other day, I was, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a truck driver, I'm driving. I was, I'm listening to the news. There's a white lady who's talking. He's talking about the... Uh, the, 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 what you call it, the thing that's going to right now, the, the politician, politics. Uh, he's talking about uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's, uh, you know, election is coming up. A white woman is talking. She said, she said, all these politicians, uh, Donald Trump, uh, Ted Cruz, who else? Who else? Butcher, uh, Butcher Bernie Crackers. Sanders. Butcher, but, Butcher Esau's. She, he, she said one of the hardest topics they all of them is talking about 
to get people to vote for them is uh, addiction. And they're talking about uh, crack cocaine. They're talking about uh, what, are, what are the drugs? Uh, heroin. Heroin. Okay, what, one of the biggest problems is heroin. So now, you know the funny thing is about that? You got some of those politicians making comment about how, yeah, I had to bury my granddaughter. I could not get her, get her off drugs. Uh, there's a lady, Fee, uh, Fiona. She said, yeah, I had to bury. Oh, all, all of them got sub stories about yeah, family members who've been addicted to drugs that so don't die. So now they say, instead of putting them to jail, instead of, if you vote for me, instead of putting people in jail, we're going we're gonna to seek on, we're going to find we a way. Have. We have. So I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait, stop, 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 stop. You know, you know the funny thing is, if you listen to it long enough, you can say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The black community, the so-called white men been destroyed the black community with drugs for decades. For decades. Nobody never talk about that. Not one person. Now, all of a sudden, white supremacy start dying now. All of a sudden now, oh, we cannot no longer put them in jail. We gotta seek help. <laughs> give me, give me a hey, freaking hey, break. Hey, Deacon, listen, man. I seen a clip. It just came back to my mind. You remember that movie, um, American Gangster? Yes. And remember, it was about um, who was that about again? Uh, I forgot. Frank something. Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas. Right. Yeah. Frank Lucas. If you ever seen the actual footage of old footage of where he's the drugs were sold at in Hall, like 116th Street. This is like late 70s, right, right. early 80s. I mean, the drugs totally destroyed the black. You see on 116th Street, crowded people getting the drugs and, you know, heroin leans you over, you know, you're arched out your back and you, yep. you're just done, man. It, it, it was it's Zombieville. But yeah. that didn't happen to the politicians' kids. No. Nah. Okay? That didn't happen to the, where the politicians live. Nope. But all throughout the black community, that happened. That happened, yeah. And we are the we are the offspring of that. Yeah, we're the offspring of that, man. And people wonder why 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 is the black community so damn crazy, man? Right. But when you put the drugs in the black community, now it trickles down to the suburbs. Now you want to do something. Yeah, about now it. you want to do something about You're the it. The damn devil. Now you want to. Well, it's it's unbelievable. And then you got the black man. Oh, oh, you know you got to vote for this. You know they're gonna do. We have it. Hell with. Hell would you vote? That's that's still a form of Stockholm syndrome. Right. It is. That's still Stockholm syndrome because you leave your the empathy don't go to you and your people now. You hear the politician and like you said, if you listen to it long enough, they sound so yeah. they're actors. They're yeah. all actors, so yeah. it sounds so convincing that you just go on. You know, you're gonna empathize with them because you're gonna say, oh well, I remember that happened to my cousin back in nineteen yep. uh, two thousand twelve when he died and such and forth. That's a hell with them. You, you gotta remember those those politicians. Their job is to is to know how to sway people with yep. words. With words. That's their job to sway you with your, with their words. Smooth words. Smooth words. What does scripture say? His word is smoother than butter. Right, smoother than smooth. butter. Let's get it. Right. You know. 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 I gotta bring some history because. You know, our job, Bishop Netanyahu always said, is to bring the fact to the people. That's right. Is to remind the Negro, because the, the, Negro, the Negro always forgot. We are the most forgotten people on the planet. Earth. Absolutely. I can kill your whole family this year. <laughs> Next year, you're drinking in the same, you're, you're sitting in the table eating with me. All right. We, you forgot I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgive you. Right. And you wearing his hair. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Let, 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 let's bring. You say you want to bring the scripture? No, we're gonna read that Psalm 55. Bring that scripture, then we're gonna we're gonna go to some history to show you to to show you something about your friendly neighborhood white man. You Christian. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna stick to the topic. Those are Christians. So S start up at uh, start at verse 20. Psalms chapter 55 and verse 20. He have put forth his hands against such as be as peace with him. See that? So the so the op, the objective here is he put forth his hands to like to shake your hand in agreement to be at peace. We come in peace. We came. Listen, we sailed across the Atlantic Ocean to come over here to 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 the land where the natives were. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And we stuck out our hand like we were at peace. But meanwhile, the other hand behind his back with the sword and the daggone yokes of iron. Yep. Remember, they came with that cross, too. Right. Mm -hmm. They came in peace with the cross, so-called peace. Hey, and remember, they had the yokes of iron already with them on the ships to enslave the, the, the natives. So they came with an objective, okay? They didn't come here and make the yokes of iron. They already had it with them because yep. on the first day, Columbus put them in yokes of iron and put them back on ships to Spain. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He had broken his covenant. Mm -hmm. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. These same men are in the earth today. They, they talk to us with fair speeches and smooth words. To what? To have you swaying, to have empathy towards de to them. Guess what? They, the, the, their, their women did the same thing during the feminist movement. Yeah. They talked a good game to our sisters, swayed them out of the house, and had them fighting for their rights. They, they even swayed them out of their skirts and dresses. Exactly. <laughs> Tinsel leggings and tight ass uh, low rider jeans. So it's showing you that that's talking about a nation of people, both their males and females. Esau, they have those spare speeches, man. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. What it was, was that feminist movement was to empower the white woman, but destroy the black homes. That's war against us. This is what we don't understand. Everything they do is a systematic plan to destroy us. Read hmm. that again. Read that line again. But war was in his heart. Sometimes we don't look at it. Oh, they're not hanging us by trees and pulling us apart with horses anymore. But they're still warring against you. They are still warring against you. Go ahead. His words were softer than oil. Ooh, his words go down smooth. They make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they go down like some hot cocoa on a, on a, on a, on a cold day. Mm -hmm. uh, come on. Yet were they drawn swords. So, so they have the intentions on killing you. They tell you, oh, you should get your kids vaccined against, against all of the things going on out yep. here. Then what? Years later it comes out. That's, that's, that's the root of the, most of the autism, autism in our community. In our community, yeah. Okay? There's no good that can come. His handouts don't come without it benefiting him and being our detriment. Hmm. Understand that. Go ahead, D. You know, uh, let's, let, you know something? Let's bring a little history for you Negroes. Because a lot of time we're thinking... We want justice, like what happened in Flint, Michigan. I want justice, they're killing my children. Uh, we're seeking justice, we're seeking reparation. We want this, we want that. But let's, 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 you know something, let's go back. Let's go back for a minute. Let's go back from the beginning of America. Mm -hmm. Oh, the beginning. Ooh. The Constitution of America was created in 1887. I'm going to bring a little history for you Negroes. In 1887, the Constitution of America was created. America got the, got the independence. 17. 1787. America got the independence uh, from Great Britain in July 4th, 1776. Right? When America got the independence from Great Britain in 1776, we was still in slavery. I'm going to repeat that again. When America got the independence from Great Britain in 1776, the so-called Negroes was still in slavery. We were still in chain and shackle. We were still picking cotton. That's right. July 4th, 1776. The Constitution, uh-uh, it was, on, it was, uh, let me see this, uh, slavery then ended until December 6, 1865. How many years later is that? It was 150 years later? Mm -hmm. What is that? 17. From 1776 to December to 1865. How many years is that? 80 years. 80 years. It was only 80 years later. That 90 years later, that they, they give you the so-called independent. So now, 
Let's examine this for a minute. The Constitution was created in 1787. Slavery ended in 1865. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. So when the Constitution was written down, I was picking cotton. Right. I was southern. I was in slavery. You were in chattel slavery. So in reality, the Constitution had nothing to do with me. In reality, the Constitution was not written for my people. The Constitution actually was written to keep me in slavery. Right. But here come the Negro today. Well, hold on, hold on, my brother. Oh, oh hold on, my brother. I exercise my constitutional rights. The Constitution later was changing. It was changing, brother. You stupid as hell. The Constitution never changed. Esau just add up a little thing to it. Esau just amended it. He just amended it. He never changed. For example, I'm going to give you an example. Ah, I know, I know you don't like talking about reality. You know the problem with us, we the don't black like men, reality. we don't like reality. That's right. We don't want to face reality. Oh, oh, brother, why do you want to bring the past? You got to let it go. That's because you don't like reality. We the Israelite, we're going to bring you reality, whether you like it or not. That's why you hate us. Oh, by the way, you can call us 404. If you, think, if you, if you don't like about what we talk about, you got an opinion and you want to talk, you can call us at 404-748-1539. And, and give me a favor, don't call about your nonsense here. Because we're going to blast the hell out of you. 404-748-1539. Wait, what, you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to read a definition of something. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Because, like you said, we, we, we feel we have certain rights as so-called American citizens, right? And we're, we're, we're taken back when certain things happen to us. But let me read a definition of what we actually are. The, def the word is denizen, okay? They, they, they have you believe you're an American citizen, but what you are is a denizen, okay? And the definition is an inhabitant or occupant of a, of a particular place. A foreigner allowed certain rights in the adopted country. Mm. That's it. That's Read that again. A foreigner allowed certain rights in the adopted country. Okay? So, the, 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 when, when you're baffled at why is the government or why is the law enforcement swayed to favor Caucasians, right? But yet you'll do the same crime, and yet you're doing football numbers. Because it was the law, like, like the deacon is bringing out, when these laws were put in place, it was not for you. You were not a factor. You were not a factor in the, in the, in the equation of them building the Constitution. It was never, a, you were not supposed to be included in that. No. Nope. So after that was done, America was established. Then they said, oh yeah, what about those guys that are over here working in my cotton fields? They're denizens. We'll give them certain rights. If we were, first of all, if, if we were those citizens from the jump, there would have been no black code laws. There would have been no Jim Crow laws. So why were they able to implement laws that were against our people? Because we're not citizens. We're denizens. We gain certain rights being here, but we don't have the same equal rights as everyone else that slaughtered everyone and took this land. That's crazy you said that. Hmm. That's crazy you said that because the last statement you made, like you said, we don't have the same equal right. So. When these white men, this so Esau, the so-called white man, gunned down your children in the middle of the street, hmm. what what you say, what's that? What the Constitution is saying is he got the right to gun down your children in the middle right. of the street because when the Constitution was written, you was not part of it. They didn't include you in the Constitution. When the Constitution was written, you were, you was you didn't you didn't you you was not you was in slavery. Right. Hey, 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 Watch, uh, uh, read the 13th Amendment in the Constitution. Uh -huh. All right, we're going to read the 13th Amendment Bring it out. to the United States Constitution, okay? We got we to gotta remind the Negroes. We got we to gotta do this. We have to. Because we, 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 we seem to think that we are part of this, of this so-called white society. Right. Read. 
Is that is that still in place? This is still in place. Oh, huh. okay. Good. It's the Thirteenth <laughs> Amendment to the United States Constitution. The Thirteenth Amendment to the United States Constitution abolished slavery and involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for a crime. Hmm. In Congress, it was passed by the Senate on April 8, 1864, and by the House on January 31st, 1865. And guess what? It was only, and by the way, that right there is only 150 years old. It was only 150 years ago that happened. The same thing with voting. Why do you think, you know, there's still, every, I think every 50 years, they still have to resign. Resign for the Negro to vote. For the Negroes to vote. For, it's, it's unbelievable. It's just like my boggling how our people still hold on to this system. How people still think they are part of this system. This system from the beginning was written against you. That's right. Right. When you're going to get that, when you're going to get that through your thick head? Can I get a script? Deep? Yes. Uh, we want to get one script. Um, Hebrews 11 and 13. Because, you know, we got to take the, um, the examples of our forefathers. You know, when you read Hebrews 11 chapter, it talks about Noah. It talks about uh, Christ, Abel, Enoch, right? Abraham. These all were our forefathers. And we got to take the example of them. But let's see what it says in verse 13. Somebody. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. These all died in faith. These all died in faith. Go ahead. Not having received the promises, uh -huh. but having seen them afar off. They had faith. Go ahead. And were persuaded of them. They were persuaded of them. And embraced them. Go ahead. And confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. On the earth. That's what the Negro does not want to confess. Mm -hmm. He wants to be totally down with these devils in America. Mm -hmm. You want that American dream. You want that, that white picket fence, that fancy BMW. You want to wear your little khaki pants to work in your white corporate job. You want to shave off your bed. You, you, want, to be a, you want to be the white man. Mm -hmm. But they're killing you. And they, listen, you've been made into a version of him. But the 13th Amendment, their own, con their own constitution is telling you, no, you're not equal. You're a denizen. You ain't got in your mind that Martin Luther King garbage of, of being equal. Why they gun you down on camera and get off? I mean, what more proof do you need except the, these past couple years to see that you are not equal to this man? You are a denizen. You have certain rights. But our forefathers said they knew they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. When you read, get, get 1 Peter 1 and 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. 1 Peter. Because this is not our rest, as, as uh, Micah 2 says. The, the, the America, Babylon the Great, is not your rest. This is your place of slavery. This is your place of captivity and your place of repentance. That's right. Go ahead. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. See that the strangers that were scattered throughout all the lands of the earth. Remember, Deuteronomy 28 and 64 tells you we'd be scattered among all nations, man. Okay? You're a stranger here. This is not your land. Your, your roots go further than North uh, South Carolina, Negro. <laughs> okay? This is not your rest. Yes. True prophets of the Lord, you cannot defeat them Battling these spirits, this is Satan's kingdom These are wicked demons, how do I defeat them? Through the power of the Lord, I endure our leaving. If you're hard-headed, you can't learn Study all night like a bookworm Babylon burn like a bad perm For the word of God, I'm staying firm 
Why you in this truth so low? Get the love of a congregation, we just teaching our people. Then everybody just started hating. Keep the laws trying to get farther. Cut a Christian like a bad barber. Throw the bomb like Pearl Harbor. Study the word trying to get smarter. You can't stop these prophets. The most high, he got us. These wicked nations, they stay hating, but the most high gonna drop them. God. Let me show you what these scriptures do. Cutting demons when I hit the group. Got a full script, but you finna do. With a real prophet, just a little room. Coming through like a monsoon. Still sitting through Bethlehem. Funny how y'all think white Jesus is here to save you, black coons. Israel, stop sinning. Quit playing, stop getting. Wanna be wicked all week, then Sunday come with your repentance. You know these curse fitted, y'all stuck and still wicked. Black men need to follow Christ and stop following these false religions. Keep the laws in the faith of Christ. We do it right, plus we hate it of any man. We pay the price, see our body armor toughen it. Wicked brothers stumbling, we headed to another level. They progress is what we need. I wrote the mother ship, cause you gotta take the trip, cause Babylon the trip. So I hustle with my brick. What these other brothers talking about? Always gotta run they mind. They the ones if Christ was hit, run the wrong and snitch your mind. Have you ever thought you were an Israelite? Have you ever considered that you were a Jew? You ever wonder what language you spoke and figured out it's Hebrew? Blonde hair and blue eyes. Who the hell is that? Don't you know the Christ that I serve? Has woolly hair and he's black. Who's the king? I'm talking about Christ. He brought repentance to the Israelites. We God's children. We ain't scared. We ain't worried about the fight. Better get back and repeat the lie. A lot of flames are you gonna fry. The time is near. Salvation's now. We don't die. We multiply. Northern kingdom Israelite. Got love for the southern too. Come up in the body with your vision. And we cutting you. We shunning you. Casting you away. Deliver him to Satan. Benjamin up tell it damn What's up? It's a cup, it's a cup. Leave from getting wounded, can't forget that blood. Leave our ash in my ass, so what's up, send me young into the trap of Judah. Judah. That's where I'm from. Benjamin up tell it damn What's up? It's a cup, it's a cup. Leave from getting wounded, can't forget that blood. Leave our ash in my ass, so what's up, send me young into the trap of Judah, Judah, that's where I'm from. When we doing battle, you know who first up is Judy, yep. Try, pride, but you know I still got love for all of us. Praise God, fighting off these demons in the graveyard. Stay scripted up, out your mouth, the law must not depart. Otherwise, it's so hard, trying to decide what's right from wrong. What feel good to satisfy and boast as a heavy yoke that'll leave you slow. What got me pops being in the world takes we first. Bite like a deal, you heard the knowledge to me and my reverence say him. Keeping your top shape beside medicine. Every problem we face, the answers in here. Most people deceive, don't know who they is. Happy that the president got the same kind of scan news flash. My people, we started this. He put us in charge, we gave away the rulership. For what? For lust, for lack of love. The thirst, the curse is still on us. Most won't see it, that's why we gotta wake them up. My tribe, Homer David, Homer Solomon. Yes, sir, in crisis, something to take pride in. All the tribes, not just only. Only my Ruben, Manessa, Naptali, Asher, and Gad, Ephraim, Issachar, and Dan, Zebulon, Benjamin, Simeon, Levi, Jew, 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 Jew. Benjamin, Naptali, Dan, what's up, it's a cup, it's a cup, Ain't from Gad and Ruben, can't forget Zebulon, Zebulon, Levi, Asher, Manessa, what's up, Simeon, into the trap of Judah, that's where I'm from, Benjamin, Naptali, Dan, what's up, it's a cup, Leave from getting rude and can't forget that blood. Leave our ash in my ass, so what's up, Simmy? You know, uh, this this class we call it what? Uh, Christianity is worse than crack cocaine part two, right? Everything there's a connection. A lot of us, you know. A lot of us don't think that, but there's everything connected to each other. Uh, for example, remember earlier we were talking about how the black men is killing each other, uh, the cops is killing us, but the Negroes and Hollywood is talking about why the white men didn't invite me to the Oscar, why the white men didn't nominate me to an Oscar. That's right. Everything is connected. At the end, of, at the end they are Christians. Let, let's I want you to read this this right here. Just read this 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 and this part right here. I'm gonna show you something. How everything is connected. 
Murder Rates Rising Sharply in Many U.S. Cities. That's a title from the New York Times. Milwaukee. Cities across the nation are seeing a startling rise in murders after years of declines. And few places have witnessed a shift as precipitous as this city. With the summer not yet over, 104 people have been killed this year after 86 homicides in fall of 2014. So this is this is 2015. This is this was written summer. Yes, August 31st. That's the summer 2015. It was only summer when this is written. Go ahead. A hundred what? A hundred? How many? Hundred? How many people? A hundred and four people have been killed this year. Wait, remember, that's in one major city. That's that's only talking about one major city. That says with the summer not yet over. The summer not yet over. Go ahead. More than 30 other cities have also reported increases in violence from a year ago. In New Orleans, 120 people had been killed by late August, compared with 98 during the same period a year earlier. Mm -hmm. In Baltimore, homicides had hit 215, up from 138 at the same point in 2014. In Washington, the toll was 105, compared with 73 people a year ago. And in St. Louis, 136 people have been killed this year, a 60% rise from the 85 murders the city had the same time last year. You know, you know, a lot of time we're reading these numbers, we're thinking, then I will, you know, right? And you know the crazy thing about these numbers? All of them is J, is our people, usual. Like. Those are our people. Nobody's talking about that, though. Right. No? Mm -mm. Will Smith don't want to talk about that. Spike Lee don't want to talk about that. Uh, Jada Penke don't want to talk about that. Stacy Dash. Stacy Dash don't want to talk about that. Nobody talk about that. But everybody's talking about why black people didn't get nominated to the Oscar. <laughs> Keep on reading. Rivalries among organized street gangs, often over drug turf, and the availability of guns are cited as major factors in some cities, including Chicago. Mm -hmm. But more commonly, Many top police officials say they are seeing a growing willingness among disenchanted young men in poor neighborhoods to use violence to settle ordinary disputes. Read, the la read this one again. Right. I'm going to show you a connection. Read that. But more commonly, more commonly, many top police officials uh -huh. say they are seeing a growing willingness mm -hmm. among disenchanted young men in poor neighborhoods to use violence to settle ordinary disputes. Use violence to settle ordinary disputes. Hmm. You gotta ask yourself. Because I remember there was a time. I don't know about y'all. I remember there was a time. If we're arguing, we used to fist fight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. That, oh. And guess what? That when, that when we, that's, that's when we actually used to have men around. Today, you want to know what the problem is today? I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to share with you what is the problem is today. There's an article I was reading. It's called The Emasculation and Feminization of the Black Man. A lot of what Pierce site talk about the emasculation and feminization of men. The thing is, these issues are usually addressed by perspective of white men. But what of the black men? The, the, emasculation, the emascul emasculation and feminization of black men has been an ongoing process for hundreds of years. Hmm. It has different cause and effect than the emasculation and feminization of white male. Let's break down this cause and effect and see just what is happening to the masculine black men. Definition of emas em emasculine, to make a man feel less masculine, to deprive a man of his male strength, mm. role, yeah. to make something weaker and less effective to castrate. Mm. Hmm. Man. Hmm. That's a, that sounds like a Christian black man right there. Wow. So, man. the black man. Emascul emasculation has its root in slavery. The role of the man as a provider and protector of his family was taken from the black man, right. whose family was often torn from his arm and forever lost to him. When you deprive a man of his freedom, 
you emasculate him to the fullest extent. Freedom is one of most is freedom is one of men most covered and cherished ideas. And the, the black man in America has only recently been granted his freedom. Mm. Quote unquote. Quote unquote. I, I love this article. In a modern sense, the black man is emasculated by being conf conf confined to the restriction white America has placed on him. Hmm, let me read that again. Damn, yeah. In a modern sense, the black man is emasculated by being confined to the restriction white America has placed on him. Damn, yeah. Black men are disproportionate. Mm, what is that word? Let's see. You know I don't speak a lot of English. <laughs> disproportionately. Right here. Disproportionately. Are oh, you got the article? Yeah. Go ahead. Read, read, read where I left off. It says, black men are disproportionately incarcerated, living in poverty, prone to more serious health issues, and so on. Mm -hmm. It says, if freedom is man's most cherished possession, then bondage is great is his greatest enemy. Read that again. If freedom is man's most cherished possession, then bondage is his greatest enemy. Hmm. Read on. Not just bondage in the physical sense, as in being kept against his will, but bondage in a mental and emotional sense, as in not being able to escape the and Emma, 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 chains of racism, oppression, and negative stereotype. Black men continue to be shackled by these chains, as well as being physically kept in bondage, prisons. Thus, we find that many black males today have been emasculated and are unaware of what manhood is really about. Read that part again. Read that part again. Thus, we find that black that many black males today have been emasculated and are unaware of what manhood is really about. Hmm. Unaware of what manhood is really about. So a lot of black men is unaware what manhood is really about. That's one of the reasons we're killing each other. That's right. One of the reasons we kill each other is that we cannot see Christ in each other. We hate each other. Read on. In lieu of a strong example of manhood, young black males today are exposed to criminals and other undesirables and adopt their characteristics and the misguided notion that these are real men. Right. Black. Yeah, jump down. Jump down to fe feminize. Feminize. The definition. To give a feminine quality to, to cause to take on feminine characters. To castrate. That's just like when they want you to speak like Joel Osteen. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. They want you to speak like Joel Osteen. That's exactly right. Or... Me? or Mm -hmm. When they when they make the brothers put on the dresses, yeah, mm. yeah, you know them actors and, and, and black men of high stature that Negroes hold in high stature, yeah, put on dresses and skirts. I think they talk. He talk about that too in this article. Go ahead, keep on reading down. Say we have established that the black man in America has been emasculated, but that's just one piece of the puzzle, and the military. They break you down and build you back up as a soldier, marine, etc. The same holds true for the creation of the sterile black men. The second phase in the creation of the sterile black men is feminization. Hmm. Hmm. Read. Through emasculation, a man's sense of manhood is, dis is distorted and de or destroyed entirely, leaving him open to all kinds of influences. You know what? You know what that's saying. That's telling you why homosexuality 
is the fast and growing growing spirit in the black community. That's right. Man. That's the fastest growing thing in the in the black community. And guess what? The black man is pushing it. Your president Obama is pushing that thing. We hard. Why? Because once you become feminized, once you become a homo, you ain't no threat to the black man. Nope. Because guess what? Man. You cannot produce nothing. Right. You cannot for you to produce something, you gotta be with a woman. So the white men know the more homos we got in the black community, the better it is. The better it is to control them. The better it is to destroy the black family. The better it is to keep them from procreation. To create things. Two, black, two, two homos cannot have no kids. Two lesbians cannot have no kids. That's why the white man is pushing that thing hard. The white man is passing laws like crazy. Why? So... That thing keep going. The same is the same thing when they was pushing crack cocaine in the black community. Right. It's exactly the same thing. They sit down, they come up with ideas to de to keep going, continue destroying the black community. We don't. You got you, you, you got something? Because you mentioned they want to stop the procreation. Here's something that they definitely want to stop. We're gonna go to Sirach 30. And just to go straight to the point, we'll just read verse 6. You, you stay in there, let him read that. So rock what? Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 and verse 6, just to get the point. <coughs> this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. He left behind him an avenger mm -hmm. against his enemies. So when you have a son and you teach your son, as you read the, the, the verses up ahead, atop, above it, it tells you that a, a, a man is supposed to teach his son. And there's certain things you're supposed to teach your son, like who the enemy is. Okay, oftentimes we send our children out into this world never telling them who the enemy is. So what they do is they, they join and they assimilate with the enemy and then look at you like you the devil because yeah. you never told them, you never prepared your children. You send them out into the world unprepared. Right. Read. And one that shall requite kindness to his friends. So now what the, the cut, what Deacon has mentioned about they want to stop that procreation, they want to stop us making avengers. Yep. That when we're dead and gone, they're going to keep on fighting for God's laws, man. That's what they want to stop. They want to stop the, the, the building of God's army. That is what they want to stop. So the feminiz feminization is pushed into our community, yep. man, to keep us in the midst of sin. So that we'll say, oh, you know what? Uh, we're gonna two 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 black men gonna be together and adopt a little white baby. Hmm. What the hell is this? But no, you should be uh, uh, marrying in righteousness, have children, teach them God's laws, teach them who the enemy is, teach them their nationality that they can avenge you. So, and it said, and I think it says when you're gone, it's like you never left. Where is that? It's a little bit down. It's a little bit down. It's the same. It's the same chapter. Um, no, 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 it's up above. Above, yeah, yeah. Verse four. Read verse four. Verse four. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. So you, when you leave your avenger behind, it's like you never died. It's like you, you never die because you, you leave your son behind, fighting the same fight you fight, and he fighting it better than you fought it. Yeah. Read. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. Mm -hmm. You see that thing. So that's what they want to stop. They want that thing to be nipped in the bud. But the Israelites ain't trying to hear that. No. We ain't trying to hear that. We raising up Avengers. That's when we're dead and gone. Those prophets will be in the earth prophesying against this that's wicked right, kingdom, man. That's, man. that's right. If it's still here, anyway. All praises. Uh, where you at? Where you at? In the uh, the feminine, where through, you at? through emasculation, a man's sense of manhood is disordered or destroyed entirely leaving him open to all kinds of influences. He is a man physically, but emotionally and mentally, he is lost. We got a lot of that here. We got a lot of, when you go to the black community, you got a lot of men, growing men who's walking around. Physically, they look strong, mm -hmm. but they lost. Hey, Deacon, last was that last Saturday? We are on the streets. We seen a grown man, hard as hell, walking around, bopping around, and then get ran off the block by a damn woman. Right. That brother didn't come back for like two hours while we were outside teaching. Mm -hmm. That's the state of. And, and she, she, when she ran him off the block, she walked to the next corner like, yeah, I just ran that nigga off the block. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? Walking like a dude. 
Yep. Because it, it, it's going two ways. The the black man has become the woman, and the woman has become the black man. That's really what we got, man. Mm. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Bita. That's when the powers that be begin to feminize the black men. This lost black man is encouraged to adopt feminine qualities and thereby comes to resemble women emotionally. That's right. Hmm. Wait, it says he's been encouraged to adopt feminine ways. That goes back to the TV. Because all you see, like, like all, all these uh, black producers and executive producers now, they, they, they push in shows like Empire. Yeah. Right. Where yeah. the homosexual yeah. is the only sane person on the damn show. Yeah. It's disgusting, man. Huh? He's a hero. He's, yeah, he's, he's going to talk about that. He's, he's yeah, going to talk about some of these shows. It says, this lost black man is encouraged to adopt feminine qualities and thereby comes to resemble women emotionally and mentally and even physically in many cases. You know, that's why I say earlier, there is, there is a beginning in everything. There's a beginning in everything. Because what happened is, you got these young men right now, you got these young men who call themselves Thug and the gang. They way to it, they're, they're so feminine. Right, emotional. Emotional. Brother, why you watch my, why you look at my sneaker? Right. Why you step on my sneaker? Pop, put out a gun, boom, 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 boom. That's very emotional. They don't know how to deal with it. Why? Because society, why society is pushing, oh, uh, 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 how, does, uh, uh, how did they say, oh, I got to work it as my feminine, uh, my feminine side? My feminine side. I got to get in touch with my feminine side. I got to get in touch with my feminine side. Oh, man. That's some crazy stuff. Man. Because he don't know how to deal with this emotion. We don't? The feminization of the black man is most evident in and, and proper, propagated by music, mute movies, and television. Look at television shows like Real Housewives Ooh. of Atlanta. Oh, God. America's Next Top Model, etc. We are bomba bombarded with images of flamboyant homosexual black men who not only are gay, but who walk, talk, dress and act like women and if they're not feminine gays they're unstable thugs <laughs> <laughs> damn wow. damn go ahead keep on reading wow. when influential rappers like kanye west and asap rocky don oversized shirts and kilts when they place an extreme attention on fashion and other feminine things they manipulate millions of impressionable, of impressionable young black males to follow suit. The same goes for movies. When black actors dress up in drags, it normalizes such behaviors, and instead of viewing it as abhorrent, we view it as funny. That's true. Why? Uh, mm -hmm. Read that. Read that part. White America loves to see these feminized black yeah, that's men. Right. Oh. Hmm. Hey, hey, that's can right. I say something on that yes. real quick? Let me say something on that real quick, man. Because I saw something that made a lot of sense to uh, the media. The NBA, the National Basketball Association, under David Stern, that damn devil Jew, fake Jew. The, the, no, nah, there's another name for the NBA. The Negro. Negro Basketball, Basketball Association. Association, right? Assimilation. <laughs> Assimilation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assimilation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Bishop Daniel. All praise. Hey, listen. In the early 2000s, when you had men like Allen Iverson, um, right, Tracy McGrady, right, Vince right. Carter, they used to wear baggy jeans right. and hoodies. so forth, hoodies. Right. And, and, and not even, yeah. Regular hip hop clothes. America had a problem with that. The, the 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 fake Jew had a problem with that. You could not dress that way anymore. Um, coming to games or leaving the game or doing a press conference or anything. But now, when you have a man like what's his name, Russell Westbrook, who wears these flamboyant friggin' weirdo capris, they um. Dwayne Wade, Walker right, Prees, right, right. Um, a couple other brothers, LeBron, LeBron. They, they wear Capri pants, spandex, spandex. 
um, the, the extra tight feminine shirts, okay? Those are now, those are now, uh, um, standard. That's the standard. Okay. That's a standard. They're, okay. they're okay with that. Yep. They, they're pushing it now. Yeah. But when the black man was masculine, as Allen Iverson was, that was a problem. Yeah, that was a problem. You know why? Because America loves when you're a little girl, man. Yeah, they're going to eat. That's the next statement. Okay, That's the next statement. That's the next statement. We the fuck. We the start with the white America again. White America loves to see these feminized black males because they are far less threatening to white society than strong, proud black men. You hear that? Yeah. Read that statement again. White America. That's, this is for your questions. Read that again. White America loves to see these feminized black males because they are far less threatening to white society than strong, brow, proud black males. Mm -hmm. Black men in dresses make white people laugh. Black men in black clothes wearing black berets scare them. You see that? Damn right. Hey, hey, that's the Israelite. Right. <laughs> we, man, listen. They, they, we are scared of them. They look at us and be like, man. What man, these Negroes about? What these Negroes about? They are scared of that thing. Because what America know, once they black men start with painting, keeping the love most like God, that's the end of their rulership. Oh, one, one other thing. One other thing, one other thing. I forgot this thing here just clicked in my head. <sighs> the Los Angeles Clippers this past month put out a commercial with DeAndre Jordan. He had the big blonde weave. You ain't seen that thing? He had the big, the big blonde weave. Um, Kevin Garnett's the grandmother, and uh, um, little uh, what's um, Chris Paul is the husband of big seven foot DeAndre Jordan. We've been turned into damn disgusting, disgusting little girls, man. Yeah. And Esau uses these punk ass black men to push it on black people in the yeah, community. Yeah, that's man. exactly what they do. Then you got coons like uh, what's the other coon? Um, Which one? Scandal from Sc from Scandal. Keith Washington, Kerry Washington. Washington. Came, that's how a, a, a devil. Like yeah, I said she's a devil. Kerry Washington can go on a on a music award show and say, hey, why why don't y'all accept homosexuality in the black community? Yeah. you guys are wrong for that. You got accepted. It. It's 2006, 2015. That's, she's a damn devil. Just and, like and you know the funny thing is, he was a black woman who play a hoe, a hoe in national television. She's the, she plays the white man's bed witch. That's the black woman who played the white man hoe in national television. Who got the nerve to go on national television telling the black community what to do? Right. He's and telling you Negroes, you feminine Negroes, why, why you don't accept that? You see me, I'm a hoe. I play the white man hoe. You accepted that. You accepted me playing the white man hoe. How come you cannot accept homosexuality? This is our, this is our filth. This is the filth. This is our law we become in this society. This is our law. The black man, the black woman, the Hispanic man. This, this is our law we become in South in, in white society. Uh, can, can, can you read the last part of that, what you just read? About the threatening, I'll probably from the top. <laughs> read, read it again. Read it again. White America love to see these feminized black males because they are far less threatening to white society than strong, proud black men. Black men in dresses make white people laugh. That's right. Black men in black clothes wearing black berets scare them. The the feminized black men is better received by mainstream America. That's, that's, that's the thing right there. There's something about organized brothers that puts fear on white America. Hmm. Let's get that. Revelation 11. Yes. Revelation 11. Bring it up. This is the book of the Revelations, chapter 11, and verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. So after slavery, after slavery is when you started hearing this truth coming out. After we were we were in hard bondage for 350 years, the Lord, the Lord poured his spirit upon us. Okay, go ahead. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. You see that? 
great fear fell upon those that saw these men standing up as men. That's what the article just said. Hmm. The article said that when you see, they see black men in berets and, and all black, that they're afraid of them. They're threatening to them. But guess what? That's why when Deacon said, that's the Israelites right there, the scripture says that's the Israelites. Yep. That's right. That stand upon their feet in the face of, what's that? That it stand in the face of the oppressor. Then shall the righteous men stand in great boldness. See that? Then shall the righteous men, those stand upon their feet as a great exceeding army through the spirit of the most high. Read it from the top again, bro. Then shall the righteous men uh -huh. stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. And see, you see that thing? The Israelites stand in great boldness before the face of those that have afflicted them. That's a powerful scripture, man. Because the effeminized man ain't standing up against his oppressor. The effeminized man ain't saying, no, I will not live under my wife's skirt. The effeminized man is, 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 is not, is, does not want to be that bold line in this community and those examples to those young men by not being drug dealers and whoremongers. No, they stand up against all of the foul things that America teaches them to be. All of these things that's effemination is taught by Babylon the Great. That's why the prophets always taught against their captivities. Because the things they attacked, their captivities taught them were defiled and ungodly, man. It was the most ungodliest things on earth. Read it again. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness mm -hmm. before the face of such as have afflicted him mm -hmm. and make no account of his labors. See that? They don't make any account of our labors. So we're going to tell them, listen, you wicked devil. You're the one who gave us these ghettos and put drugs in there and gave us alcohol, gave us guns, gave us everything for destruction. Okay? And we're not coming back to beg you for a damn thing because Christ yeah. is going to bring it all That's back true. to us a hundredfold, right. man. That's, true. That's right. Go ahead, D. Hey, continue with the, the article. Uh, we only got like a couple of months ago, and then we're going to jump back to the scriptures. Some make the point. It says, some make the point that this is not some plot, that there have always existed feminine black men. And that they are now coming out because it is more acceptable in society. Right. Hmm. The thing is, these feminine black men were never favored over masculine men. Masculine black men. It is true that feminine black men existed. It is also true that today they are favored over masculine men because they are less threatening. Hmm. A gay effeminate or otherwise non-threatening black man is favored over a strong proud black man that's why society now if you look at there's a bunch of pictures where that's magic Ooh. johnson's son filthy filthy yeah, disgusting. disgusting that nigga like six six with, uh, a, with a pocketbook jump jump down the the masculine the emasculated feminized black men is the product of hundreds of years of programming, indoctrination, right. and brainwashing. Read that again. That's right. The emasculated. This is this is what the black woman want us to be like. This is what the black woman call us, telling us, "Oh, I don't like the way your guys teaching the Bible. I don't like the way your guys reading the Bible." This is what she want. Read that again. The emasculate, the emasculated, effeminized black men is the product of hundreds of years of programming, indoctrination, and brainwashing. First, they break us down, making us lose our sense of real masculine, 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 masculinity. Masculinity. <laughs> masculinity. Masculinity. It's the accent. <laughs> and then they try and build us back up as feminine or homosexual. Hmm. Mm, mm. That's heavy. Hmm. But Jeremiah 1 and 10, they actually put that scripture into place and tore down what we're supposed to be right? yeah. and built us back up in the forms of effeminate men. Yeah, effeminate men. Mm. Black men in the past, despite. The you, know, you know that statement you just read? Read that statement again. They what? 
Uh, the one about the destroying the the emasculated, feminized black man is the product of hundreds of years of programming, indoctrination, mm -hmm. and brainwashing. Mm -hmm. First, they break us down, making us lose our sense of real masculinity, mm -hmm. and then they try and build us back up as feminine or homosexual. Mm -hmm. Keep on reading. Black men in the past, despite the adversary they faced, they faced despite having their wives and children literally torn from their arms, still manage to remain masculine. Today, the black man is either a hyper-masculine thug. That's why they're killing each other. Hyper-masculine thug. That's why, that's why they're killing each other. We don't? Or feminine homosexual drag queen. Damn. Damn. Those in between exist. But they are rarely shown any love. I still have, <laughs> I still have my balls, <laughs> and refuse to hide them underneath a skirt. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Black men need to learn that their masculinity is defined by more than their physical abilities. We must learn to cultivate the masculine traits of our forefathers. Woo! Hit that again. We must what? Mm -hmm. We must learn to cultivate the masculine trait of our forefathers. Our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We don't. Honor, courage, and commitment. And most importantly, pride. 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 Pride to be proud to be an Israelite. Proud to be the prophet of Mosai God. We don't. The black man has always been a proud man, but pride without anything to back it up is just arrogance. Mm. Arrogance is not a manly quality. It is the result of insecurity and low self-esteem, both of which the modern black man has come to possess. We sell ourselves out by dressing and acting like women for the sake of white America, mm -hmm. so that many, so that we may, we may appear less threatening. You know what he's saying? He's saying, you're black men, entertainers, a sport, you're afraid to offend white America. That's right. That's what he's saying. Instead of stand up like a black man, a strong black man, you want to act feminized so they can, so you can make them laugh. So you, so you won't offend them. That's what he's saying. Uh, society fear. We down the bottom. Society fear. Society fears strong men, and it especially fears strong black men. If some black men choose to have sex with each other and run around dresses, fine. But if we not, but we should not be normalizing or encouraging this behavior. We should be encouraging manhood. If we do not step up to the plate, we will be a race of Enochs, eunuchs, and simps. And simps. Damn. Bruh. Damn, damn, damn. Now, that's, some, that's a strong, that's, that was a strong article. Powerful. That's a powerful article. Now, <sighs> Ezekiel 34, 31. Is it, because this is what, what we just swear, this is what white society want us, the black men, to act like. This is what the, the, this is what the black woman, the big man black woman want us to act like. Little sissy boys, feminine. Because we got those phone calls all the time. We got those letters, we got those comments. I don't like the way your brothers talk. Can your brothers lower it down a little bit? You talk too loud. Why you gotta yell? Why you gotta yell? Are you angry all the time? Why are you angry all the time? The scripture says, be ye angry and sin not. Uh, Ezekiel 34, 31. Ezekiel 34, 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. No, we are sissy boys. Are men. No, we're supposed to be feminized. Are men. What does God say? God say what? The flock of my pasture are men. That's what the Bible said, black woman. That's right. God said we are men. We are men with balls. That's right. That's why I said it. 
We are men with balls. And by the way, you know that you know you know what happened to? Let's go back to some of these brothers that was with IUIC. Oh, uh, brother, I don't like the uh, my wife no more scripture. You know what happened? Some of you don't have two balls. Some of you got one ball. One ball is in your wife's pocketbook. <laughs> I think some of you got one ball. Some of you, I think your wife got one ball and you got one. Hey, you and your wife share your balls. Yeah, <laughs> some of you, you and your wife share your balls. That's why you're not strong enough to stood up to her. That's right. You have no balls, but the men in this table, That's right. we got balls. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. And not defiled by women. Not defiled by women. Right. And it's all back. It's all go back to Christianity. That's right. Talk, my pastor don't talk like that. Why can't you t turn it down a little bit? Yeah. No, we're not going to turn it down. They say, these ain't men of God. They ain't got yeah. the spirit of God. They ain't got the spirit of God. They talk, they talk too, too angry. Yeah. They're too angry. Hey, I, I want to show you our scripture. I'm just gonna, I'll read it real quick. Proverbs 8 and 4. Unto you, O men, I call. That's right. And my voice is to the sons of men. Read that again. Unto you, O men. I'm in Proverbs 8 and 4. Unto you, O men. I call. You know what most I got said? And to you, O oh men, I call. Why? Because God deal with their men first. He's always, all through the Bible, God always deal with their men first. God never deal with feminine men. God deal with strong black men first. That's who God always deal with, strong men first. Read on. And my voice is to the sons of men. My voice is to the sons of men. We are the sons of, we are the sons of the living God. We're going to talk like it, whether you like it or hey, not. The Lord said, I'm a man of war. I'm, yeah, that's what I'm about to read. Let's go that. Yeah. Exodus 15 and 3. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. God is a man of who? A man of war. No, God is God is a man of food basket, passing food basket. The Lord is a man of war. No, God is a man. We're gonna hug, love, kissing. God, oh, I love you, my little children. God is what? A man of war. Just in case you don't know, God is a man. And what happened in a war? Men die. War people die. God is a man of war. What does that mean? God kill. That's what that means. That, that killed that old comedic black conscious garbage about the woman is God. Them niggas. <laughs> the Bible says God is a man of war. A man. Not a woman, but mm. a man. Yeah, get that right too, brothers. You ain't God no, is a man of war. Worse than no damn woman. Uh, that comes from the feminization. Can, can I get one more scripture? Yeah, get one more scripture. Let's get 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. For the effeminate black man has made effeminate and still continue to be made effeminate by going to that damn Christian church. Yeah. Okay, you can't go to that Christian church and expect to be a real man. And, 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 and before, you, before you bring that scripture to office, I want to say this. That's why you see a lot of these men, uh, 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 they call themselves Israelite. They come and say, they come and say, I repent, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon correction came, I got to go. Right. It's that same feminine spirit. Yep. Is the, the same emotion spirit when they was in the world. They still got that same feminine spirit. When they come here, we try to build them as men. We try to say, hey, brother. We try to, like uh, Bishop Netanyahu say, from boyhood to manhood to godhood. That's right. Right. That, was the, that is the purpose of us as men of the Lord. That's right. But some brothers, they don't want that thing. They still want us to be little boys. They still want to be feminized. Just like that. That's what that's the article said. Right. They still want to accept it by white society as a feminized Feminine black men, but we the Israelites we say no, brother, no. That's why you see some of these men they cannot stand up to the black woman. Right. They cannot stand up, and the black women love that. Right. The black women don't like a black, a strong black man who's gonna tell her, sister, shut the hell up and sit you butt down. The black women don't like stuff like that. Right. No, 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 we equal. No, no, no. The white men say we equal. The white men say you cannot talk to me like that. Give a damn what the white. The white men say this. The, sister, shut the hell up, sit down. They don't like that thing. That's, the, that's one of the biggest problems today in Israel. Right. The black women never see black men like that before. The way we talk. And white society don't like that thing. Oh man, why the black, why are you talking like that? He sounds so angry. You damn right we angry. 
We angry of what happened to our people. We angry of seeing our black people been destroyed. We angry see the drugs in our society. We angry seeing how the black a, a black woman turn into hoes. We angry seeing how the young black men is killing each other in the damn street. We angry seeing how we selling drugs, killing each other every damn day, and nobody wanna say a damn thing about it. Yes, we mad as hell. That's right. But we, we don't worry about Oscars. Then then you worry about the damn Oscars. Hell with you Oscars. That's right. That's right. First Corinthians, oh, you want to go First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom so of God. So now we're back in the New Testament. The New Testament says the unrighteous are not going to make it. That's what Paul says, okay? For all you Christians, I think Paul said, do away with the, with the law. Like you ain't got to do the law. Paul said what? Read it again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that goes against your damn church right there, your Christian church. Go ahead. Be not deceived. So don't be deceived. Go ahead. Neither fornicators. Don't be a fornicator. That's breaking God's laws. Nor idolaters. Breaking God's laws. Nor adulterers. You cannot be an adulterer. Go ahead. Nor effeminate. You can't be what? Effeminate. One more time. Nor effeminate. So with America... Effeminizing the black man, you ain't gonna make it if you stay in that state. You ain't making it. That's what the Bible, that's what the New Testament just said. That's what Paul just said. You're not gonna make it with that weave in your head, black man. You ain't gonna make it with that, uh, uh, um, them arched eyebrows. You ain't making it. Read it again. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate, okay? So get out of that lifestyle. You have to get out of that lifestyle, man. That is not a benefit for you. That's Esau. You got Esau. You got too much Esau on the brain. That's what you got. Too much Esau on the brain. Turn Empire off. Scandal off. Housewives of Atlanta off. All right? right. And pick up your KJV and open it and study it. Go ahead. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. See that? You can't be an abuser. You can't be a damn homosexual sodomite. You ain't going to make it. You get in depth with your slave master that turned you into the homo. Good. Okay. Nor thieves. Uh huh. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. Nor revelers. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You see that? You not gonna make it being a little sissy boy. It's not e even a homosexual, but even at being an effeminate. You not gonna make it, black man. You not gonna make it. Good, dude. With this, with this little thing right here, because we're making a statement. Let me tell you, uh, the, the article said, white society, this thing was programmed, been programmed, been, they've been working on this for centuries to feminize the black man. Because a feminized black man is not a threat to, the white, to white society. And and we was talking about earlier, uh, all these politicians now is talking about, oh, we gotta stop locking those drug dealers. We gotta stop locking these people up. Let's seek help for them. Oh, let's give them. <laughs> Shut up. You've been destroying us for years. You've been using drugs in our communities to destroy us for years. You've been destroying. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, Ronald Reagan, what is what did he say? A war on drugs. War on drugs was, was in other words, for war on drugs is war on black men. That was about that wasn't war on drugs. When he said war on drugs, wasn't war against the white men who was sniffing coke, the white men who was selling coke. The war on drugs is another word for war on black men. And they gave black men football numbers. Yep. In them jail cell terms. Yep. Locked them up, tore away the key. That was war. And we read the Thirteenth Amendment. Yeah. If you get locked up in jail. You're back in slavery. Yeah, you're back in slavery. Hmm. So now today, uh, 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 you got politicians talking about, oh, I had to bury my nephew. I had to do this. I could not get my granddaughter off drugs. Cry me a river. Hmm. That's what I say. Hell with your sub stories. We don't, want, I, we don't give a damn about your sub stories. That's the same thing you've been doing to this, you've been doing this choice for years. It's the same thing you're doing, you're doing to Bill Cosby today. That's, that's right. It's the same thing. You destroy the black man. Hmm. Why? Because he stood up. Because you don't like the thing he's doing. You trying to destroy him. Now you want us to believe 
Oh, oh, he 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 raped fifty women. Get the hell out of here with that now, garbage. That's like fifty white women. Yeah. Right. When when a black man just accused of uh, uh, raping a white woman back in the 19, early nineteen hundreds, white folks used to kill the whole damn community. Yeah. Everybody got to go. Burn down your house and all that. But Bill Cosby has been doing this since the, the what the eighties? Mm-hmm. They, they saying? Yeah. Man, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Bunch of garbage. And and, and, and yeah, and, and you and got the Negroes believe it. Oh yeah, Negroes believe that crap. Negroes believe that. That they stupid Negro believe that crap. You some of you, some, I ain't gonna lie, man. Some of you in the black community, you're a bunch of idiots. It's, it's, and it's, it's also so called black media too, because yeah. that was on the cover of Ebony magazine. It was a cop. Is a picture of the Cosby is of the Cosby uh, family back in the day. And it was like a shattered uh, picture frame, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like you're also accusing him as well. Yeah, yeah. right. Why, right, why would you right. not put the article saying uh, guilty, uh, uh, innocent until proven guilty? No, they're not going to do that because they want to please white society. That's right. That's right. right. So, Your coons want to please white society. That's why we're not going to. You don't stand up for each other. That's right. That's right. Right. And because that ebony thing is in the spirit of that feminine, fe- um, feminine movement. Right. Yeah. It's in the spirit of that. But where were the white feminists when them 13 sisters in Oklahoma got raped? No. Nope. I didn't hear the white feminist nope. woman say a damn thing about that. Because it was a white man do it. Hey, was that on the cover of Ebony Magazine? Wait, why was that on the cover of Yeah, why was that in the cover of Ebony Magazine? Ain't get no press. Not ain't, no, get no, ain't get no press. No, no. They don't want to talk about that. Why? They don't like, they don't, they, 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 oh, we cannot get white society angry. We cannot offend white society. And they all call themselves Christians. Well, that's why you stay at the damn bottom. Yeah. You don't like like you said earlier, we don't want to deal with reality. This is reality, man. Yeah, this is reality. Reality is what you what you hate. You hate reality. That's why you see Stacy, what's her name? Stacy Dash. That's Stacey why you see Stacy Dash, Stacy Kun Dash talk the way she talk. Yeah. She, she don't want to offend it with society. That's right. And she she always married a, a, a devil too. Yeah. She married I, devil after devil. I don't wanna I don't wanna uh, I, I I gotta pay my you you got <laughs> Make me sick. It's, that make me sick to my stomach. One thing I want to touch on is, is, the, is the people who keep stressing the way that we teach. Keep stressing the way that we teach. We want to continue to show you that we walk in the austerity of our forefathers. Okay? We walk in their, in their footsteps, doing it exactly the way they did it. That's right. Okay? Let's go to Nehemiah 13. And start at verse 23. Let, let's, let's, let's see. Let, let's see. Actually, some of y'all, y'all got it easy right now. We're about to read how our forefathers got down. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you should see how easy you got it. Start at verse 23. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. Come on. In those days also saw I Jews mm-hmm. that had married wives of Ashdod and Ammon and of Moab. So Nehemiah saw children of Israel doing uh, in the midst of sin by marrying the other nations. Yes. Interracial marriage is a sin. So we just mentioned Stacey Dash marrying the slave master. She's in the midst of sin. Understand that. So Nehemiah saw our people committing sins against the Lord. Let's see what happened. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the in the Jews language. So now they married women of other nations, the so-called Chinese and Japanese, so on and so forth. So as the child, uh, the, the the children are usually raised by the mothers. So the mothers of other nations, Chinese, Japanese, so on and so forth, they were raising them speaking in their languages, following their customs and not the customs of our people. Continue to read. But according to the language of of each people. Uh huh. And I contended with them. So Nehemiah started to contend with them. He started, like, listen, you dudes is wicked as hell, okay? And with the kids. Go ahead. And cursed them. And he did what? And cursed them. Deacon, did I just say he cursed them? They don't like when we curse. He said we could eat. <laughs> this what does he just say? He what? Yeah, they used to that uh, white Jesus doctrine. That's what it is. So Nehemiah, the prophet, cursed them. Go ahead. And smoke. Nehemiah started to smack them. Okay? So if you Christians ever actually read your Bible, you would see the way we teach is biblical. We never smack nobody. We, and we hey, never we, smacked we, anybody. We I wish I could smack a couple I of people. Uh, I wish. <laughs> smack the hell out of you. I wish. I wish. Hey, it's like a wake up call. Yeah, hey, remember, you know what it's like? Uh, remember the movie Airplane? 
where the woman was going crazy. Oh, and yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, he threw her to come and smack her around. Hey, smack, 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 smack. Yeah. That's how it is, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes I wish when I was in, I'm in the street teaching, I can just walk in and smack you. Pow! Wake up, Wake Negro. Up, Negro. Right. <laughs> and smoke certain of them. So he started to smack some of them. And plug up their hair. Damn it, I wish when I see that yellow weave, I could just well, I can pluck your it. hair out. Oh, man. Yeah, you yeah. see that? Fuck that wig right off. That's what our forefathers did. I would have just walked around just smash up wig, <laughs> smack and pull, smack, smack and pull, and pull the damn wig out. <laughs> it's simple Negroes. <laughs> smack and pull. Read that part again. And smoked certain of them and plucked off their hair mm -hmm. and made them swear by God, saying, "Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, neither take." their daughters unto your sons or for yourself. So Nehemiah made them swear that they would no longer commit those sins that they were in, okay? So yes, what we do is biblical. He, 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 he contended with them as we do. The scriptures tell us in Isaiah 58 and 1, which Deacon brought out earlier, we're supposed to go to our people and show them their sins, okay? So stop being so damn sensitive, man. Stop being so sensitive and hear the word of God, man, because the word of God is what's going to make you right. The word of God is going to fix our communities. It's going to fix our families, man. Bring us from that lower state. It ain't no damn effeminization, man, and it's definitely not Christianity. Go ahead, D. Yo, you know, uh, no, we, we, we can go that over. We, we almost had a time. Uh, you know that... Uh, Go go to Isaiah twenty nine thirteen mm -hmm. for a minute. I wanna I wanna say something. The book of Isaiah chapter twenty nine and verse thirteen. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You know, as, as we go over these, these, these topics, what's going on in the black community, uh, in slavery, Esau the so-called man took our book, the Bible, mm -hmm. he turned it into an international. That's right. He make you believe anybody can believe in the Bible and be saved. He make you believe the Bible was written for anybody who, anybody who want to read it. The Bible was, was, was written if you're interested in it, you can pick it up and, and say, oh, Jesus come into my heart and repent. That's, but that's not in the Bible. And the scripture said that the, the, the fear of God was taught by the precept of men. The so-called white man was the one in slavery who teach us, the Negroes, how to feel God. And the way he teaches us how to feel God is in a feminine way. He's a feminine way. He's telling us, hey, God is a loving God. God don't kill. God is all about hugging, kissing. God is all about love, hugging, uh, 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 love. Uh, 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 yes, I'm whipping you. Yes, I'm, yes, I lynch you. Yes, I murder you. I kill your children. I whip your wife. God, the, God say you still gotta love me. And we grow with we, we grow with that mentality. We was programmed with that mentality that they can do whatever they want to us. And, and we have to let them get away with it. And there's nothing we can do about it. That they can, it's still today, they can kill our kids in the middle of the street. Still, still gotta forgive them. And we still gotta forgive them. But, no, but the, white, the so called white man said, September 11, we're never gonna forget. That's right. But the so called man who called themselves Jewish saying, they're still getting paid today. Right. By, 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 uh, Germany. by Germany. Claiming in America. in America, claiming, oh, they killed six million. But nobody wanna talk about the 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 the, the 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 tragedy that happened to us here in America, that happens to us here in the Caribbean Islands, all over the world. Hundreds of millions of us died. Just here alone, the so called white men killed seventy seven million. The trouble of God, the so called American Indian to take over this land. Nobody talk about that. Everybody wanted to turn a blind eyes. Today, I was listening to the news the other day. The black woman, the black man is saying, oh, they're, they're writing book now. They're trying to wash, wash slavery. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. And the black man is saying, oh, I don't want to teach my kid that. That's, 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 that's going to traumatize my kids. Negro, are you crazy? You, 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 you insane. You lost your damn mind. We lost our mind. We're supposed to tell our children what this white man done to us. But the Negro said today, oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell them. What they try to show is they try to show you how we was in slavery and we was happy. That's what the white man is reading books, yeah. children books. Started in Texas already. Yeah. We was, oh, he, he was, we was happy to serve. We was happy in slavery. That's far from the truth. Our job as leaders, as the men of God, as the prophet of God, our job is to tell the people, no, that's not the truth. Our job is to break down the Bible as is written. You are the Israelite. You are the, the, you are the, the best thing that ever stepped foot in this damn planet. That's, right. that's our job. We are not niggas. We are not spit. We are the men of the Lord. We are the sons of the living God. That's right. We are the Israelites. That's our job. And I know some of you don't, some of you going to hate our gods for it. But guess what? That's too bad. You hate Christ. That's why you kill Christ. So we expect the same thing from you. If you kill Christ, you hate Christ. So you're going to do the same thing to us. It's okay. It's okay. But at the end of the day, we've done our job. At the end of the day, we've done what we, what we were sent to do. Is to wake up our people to the truth of who they are. That's our job. Anything else, brothers? Just real quick, the fact that they don't want to teach their children about slavery is many is much of the reason why our people don't fear God today. Mm. They don't fear God because they don't know that He's the great and terrible God on the planet Earth. Okay? He's the one that did it to us because we break his commandments. So if you don't teach your children about slavery and teaching them the reason why we went into slavery, your children have no reason to fear the Lord. Hmm. Right. That's a good point. Because when you don't teach your children properly, what are you doing? You're setting for your children a weak foundation. Okay? You're good. Your children are not growing up in these laws, statutes, and commandments to fear the Most High, to fear the judgments for breaking the laws. So what are they growing up in? Christmas, Halloween, uh, American Babylonian trash, okay? That's the foundation that we set for our children as pagans, right. pagan Americans, okay? With no fear of the Lord. And that's why our, we stay in the condition we're in, because we set the foundation weak. The kids grow up with a weak foundation, what do they do? They're gonna raise the, their children in a weak foundation. And we stay in the same rut that we've been in for centuries now, okay? So somebody got to break that cycle. Guess who's going to break that cycle? The men of the Lord. That's right. Not the little boys of the Lord. The men of the Lord. That's Not the right. effeminate men. But men of the Lord are going to break that cycle. Good deep. Uh, I think um, it's 12 o'clock, right? Uh, it's 12 o'clock. It's, it's time to go. All right. Um, officer. Any announcement? Right, no praises. Uh, we also, we have a school here, if you don't know, in Atlanta, Georgia, College Park, Georgia. That's 5134 Old National Highway in College Park, Georgia. All right, zip code 30349. We also have online classes at israelunite.org backslash register. That's how you register for online classes. So come get these lessons, okay? Uh, we have, those classes are three times a day, seven days a week for free. Okay, you're not gonna get this anywhere else. And these, these, these are brothers and sisters are waking up. Cause we, 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 in online class, you got brothers from Korea, you got brothers and sisters from Switzerland, mm -hmm. Germany, South Africa, Ghana, Italy. Okay, so all praises to the Most High. This word is going out and is going out strong. Okay. Also, we got a podcast, IEYC podcast. You could download the podcast, rate, like, comment, and share. Okay, so come get these lessons. Those, those podcasts are from our bishops and deacons in New York. Wonderful lessons to get your minds right and out of Babylon the Great. Yes, sir. All right? Get your mind out of Babylon's collective behind. <laughs> All right? And stop being a one ball. Uh, yeah, stop being a one ball Israelite. Israelite. Stop being a one ball Israelite. Get your two balls back. All right, yeah. brothers? <laughs> All right, shalom.
Most High in Christ bless you all. And, and shout out to the loyal listeners, as always. Shout out to the loyal listeners of um, Patient Saints Radio. All right? And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. brothers and sisters. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.